Where'd you get the name Farm League from? I moved to LA, just kind of slept on couches, you know, learned the craft, really, I guess. What's the biggest budget you guys have ever worked with? Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> Howdy y'all. Welcome to Senior Story Time. We're your hosts, Matt, Case, and Elliot, and we're the co-founders of Senior Company. TL, Damn. Yeah. thanks for coming by. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Tim Lynch. It's like to drive south. Yeah. South, a change. Yeah. You're driving north. I heard you went to USD. Went to USD. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. Played football. Grew up in Texas. Whoa. Houston. Oh, wow. Playing all the traditional sports. Yeah. Grew up next to the only, like, surf shop in Houston. So I got into surfing and skating there, but was had this pull. Played football at USD. It was, like, one double A, but it was still yeah. something to do, and it was a chance to come west. Yeah. Heck, yeah. Beautiful school, too. Yeah, yeah beautiful yeah. school. Yeah. And my, now my son's there. Oh, nice. Oh, whoa. Cool. That's he's, cool. He's That's a amazing. junior. Cool. That's fun. It just shows you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But, my uh, girlfriend went there, and yeah. my dad went there, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Your dad went there, too? Us. For law school, yeah. Oh, after? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. I, I, th I had this image. when I, So I grew up in Houston, you know, and I was trying to play football because I was – I didn't want to play, but I was good at it, so I knew it was a ticket to get it. I didn't want to stay in Texas. Yeah. You know, even though I love it there, it's just I was ready for something new. And then yeah. I came to the school on a recruiting trip, and it was like there was a kid on a skateboard with a surfboard under his arm just ripping wow. down the campus. Yeah. And it was fucking like, yeah. you know, Mars to me. I was yeah. like, what is that? <laughs> How, what is he doing? Yeah. You know? Why is he and, doing uh, that? Was, was hometown like Friday Night Light style? Oh yeah, that's sick. yeah, and I love that shit too. I yeah, mean, that's the yeah. thing. That's what we'll probably talk about. I love, I love that contrast yeah. a lot. Yeah, I love walking in multiple in, in different worlds. Totally. Sure. Yeah. Do you remember what that surf shop was called? Shannon's. Shannon's surf Shannon's. shop. Shannon's is it still around. It's crazy. I don't know. That's wild. I should drop in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just the, just the people and the energy there, and people that came through, and then like all the all the bones videos were there. There was like it was skateboarding was really the thing, kind of just coming in. Um, but I would just hang out there, you know, and, and yeah. that was for me like a window into something. And then when I came to California, it was like it just was game changer. You kind of have a similar story to Scott Ballou. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like football in Texas, and then yeah. surf. I mean. Yeah, yeah, amazing filmmakers. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys work together pretty often? We do. We work together sometimes, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So did you go to school at USD for film? Or? They didn't have it. Oh, so wow. I, yeah, I had to find it after school, which was hard. Mm. Um, Interesting. I just knocked on doors. You know, I found um, I found a, a, like a pro surfer had like a Wayne's World style show on, and I just knocked on their door, and I was like, dude, I want to be a part of this thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they bought time on an Access Channel show, like, up in uh, L.A., and they had to produce an hour of content. This is back in the days when there was just, like, you know, handy cams with tape, you know. Damn. Wait, did you say a pro surfer? Jeez, that yeah, I mean, so like, fun, it was part of the whole, you know, it was like, it was a movement, of that momentum generation. Yeah. Movement. So it was, like, Kelly and Rob and all yeah. those guys and the, the Weatherleys and the Malloys and... They were all make it, and so there was the show, and so I was like, "This, this is kind of like I'm really interested in this this world, which is kind of a blend of, you know, music videos and storytelling and all that." So yeah. that's how I came into it, and um, they were so generous to let me just do it. And then I started traveling. I went to Tokyo. I went to the North Shore. I would just shoot and make shit, crazy, and listen to music and figure out how to put together segments. But it was there was Jeez. no supervision. It was in a garage. So do they have a crazy. budget for that? That seems like I a mean, big... I mean, it was like whatever they had in their wallet at the time. Jeez. No budget. No, really. every, the, the, his dad or his stepdad was a broadcaster, so he had some old oh, equipment that nice. they just kind of co-opted. Yeah, I was going to say, co what were you on? I mean, just, I don't even remember. It was before all. It was before the DVC shit. Wow, damn. You know? um, but it was so fun. And, I, you know, I would write record labels and get, you know, they would submit CDs and, and things like that, and yeah. I would just get... A look or an insight into you know the punk you know stuff that i was into or whatever and and then i would reach out to a label they'd send me more shit like free shit mm -hmm. and to listen to and then i and then i got into music videos from there and i was like i gotta go to la to do that so you were into punk yeah i mean i did a lot of the punk rock music videos back yeah. there either you know and that was sick. fun <laughs> that's yeah. so sick it was that's fun. Dope. that whole movement of san diego pump yeah punk yeah i i did and um that's dope. It's so weird because we were in the elevator in Vancouver on a shoot a week or two ago, and it was like oldie station, and they were playing Blink-182. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. what the? Yeah. 
coming. But that was fun. Did a lot of videos from with them and other bands and you know AFI to like the Descendants to like Green Day, right? Tons yeah. of yeah. Green Day and Cypress Hill and hip hop, you know. Like, yeah. And um, I really like so the then it was like yeah, it was it was fun. Um, and you know they were they were shooting on film to me that was like everything and like the big studio cameras. Mm -hmm. And you know it was uh, it was a kind of a step up in terms of production, and that's what excited me. And so I you know I moved to LA, just kind of slept on couches, mm. doing that, and and yeah. uh, you know learned the craft really I guess you mm -hmm. know. And I had some really great talented people that were just so generous to be like, yeah, let's go. I mean, kind of yeah. like what hey, yeah. <laughs> running the show. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, that's Eli's story. He's yeah. living it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I really did. Back. I mean, I was doing. Um, Videos for like a lot of the heroes, you know, that I watched maybe ten years before, or whatever, yeah. um, and contributing, and you know, and and that was that was that was a fun time. Yeah, I just wanted to do a little quick shout out for Eli really quick because you not know. many people see or hear Eli's voice very much, but he's always behind the camera for a lot of the Here stuff we that we do. We'll get you a camera one day. <laughs> yeah. And he was a yeah. former <laughs> intern at Farm League. Yeah. 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 Bring up, which he basically. Yeah. So do you remember him? Yeah, wow. I saw him. I looked. Yeah, Can't forget yeah. those beautiful eyes, dude. <laughs> and he slept in his car and had his whole story. Yeah, everybody yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, pretty much everyone did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like every intern was so similar in that way. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, I just moved out. Here we are. It's like, damn. Yeah. We had a couple from Germany um, all over, yeah. you know? And then it's like they damn. just show up and they're like, oh, yeah. That's wild. We said you could do this, so we, now we got to come up. Yeah, you said they could do. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I, I guess to get into Farm League in yeah. general, I, like I'd love to hear the backstory on how you created, do you call it an agency? It's like a hybrid creative agency yeah. and production studio, you know, we where we call ourselves storytellers. And so, yeah. um, you know, I think for me, I was doing what I, what I was talking about. I was making videos and then videos were so fun, but so exhausting. And there was no like, you couldn't make money doing it. So I had a couple side gigs I, w I was making surf films with the Malloys um, through the Woodshed Films, you Sick. know, label. It's amazing. We had that with uh, Thomas Campbell and Emmett Malloy and Chris Malloy, and we made some really fun films, you know. And I think I was trying to help bring up the, you know, the level in a way, but also, um, yeah. And so from there, it was like I needed to do, I needed to make some money. <laughs> so yeah. the the brand work sort of provided that. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so I started, you know, a music video executive was like, hey, do you want to do a commercial? I was like, sure. He's like, it's a music video with just more meetings. I was like, all right. Turns out it was a shitload more meetings. <laughs> you know? yeah. But we, um, you know, we, yeah, so I did commercials and then I freelance for a long. I just did my thing and then I had a, a label with Chris Malloy and, and Emmett and we would make surf films or we would make music films. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, and then I was like, about 12 or 13 years ago, that's when I started Farm League. I was like, it's just time to take the jump and try to make something on my own and try to bring what, you know, uh, what we what the offering was, you mm -hmm. know, to a bigger level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Crazy. What was there like a first film that you guys made? That 180 South. Oh, I just that was watched the first that one the other day. That was. How does insane. it hold up? <laughs> it's insane because I had watched it. I don't even remember years ago. Um, for the first time, can't remember how I even popped up in my head, but I knew it, you were coming down, so yeah. I'm like, I gotta get a refresher on that because I remember it. And uh, soundtrack's insane, the movie's insane, it's great. Soundtrack's it's, super it's good, so yeah. Good. The movie, I think, um, you know, <laughs> speaks to a lot of people. I mean, we get people totally. that write still and that just wow. quit their jobs in Wall Street or whatever. And I think Chris does such a good job of like tapping into a feeling, okay. you know, in his in his films. Yeah. So that does that, and Yvonne's so inspirational, yeah. you know? I yeah. think we we were at the cusp of when, we were, we're kind of film purists, we like to shoot film whenever we can. We didn't shoot that one on film, we had to shoot it digital because of just how long we were down there yeah, in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I think, you know, I'm glad to hear you like it still. That was great. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. It's like, it, you bring that movie up to like people that know this kind of stuff and everyone it's like a cult classic yeah. like, everyone loves that movie that's cool yeah, yeah it we should have made 180 north like the following oh day. man <laughs> where do you that would be insane where does the, the follow up the inspiration for the names come in you know uh, like, uh for, for the film or? or for any film like i feel like all your films are named so cool you know i mean that one in particular was really yvonne you know because okay. he a lot of it you know taps into his sort of thinking and 
yeah. sayings, mm-hmm. and he was very much adamant that like we needed to stop doing what we were doing and go a new direction. Uh-huh. He's done that in his business, so yeah. Um, so he was like, we need to take a 180 degree turn, yeah. you know. And then as we were kind of mapping out the film, and the, they were on a sailboat going south, they're like, this, this, yeah. that's the the film, you know. Yeah, that's it's insane. Sure. It's cool because obviously starting a brand like in Southern California, we learned about you guys so early on and have watched it all the way through. And I feel like everyone makes commercials and there's probably thousands of agencies out there, but I feel like nobody does it with like the style that you guys yeah. do. The storytelling is a good way cool. to put it. Cause yeah. it is truly that we, uh, that's fucking awesome to hear. Thank you. Um, we try really hard. We care a lot and that's mm. hard to do in this business. You know, I mean, you guys know too, just slinging yeah. stuff and, you know, you want every product or everything to be right, and it can't always be the case. But um, I think what I, I what I learned from this book, we'll talk about the Rick Rubin book yeah. or whatever, and what I knew before with Rick, because I've actually worked with Rick, Sick. Um, is that, you know, you, you kind of got to, like, keep your antenna open and then uh, harness that stuff. And I think the bet we – I never like to – be preachy and work even if you're selling something it's like yeah you want to have a light touch and you just kind of want to convey a, an emotion and that's so hard to, to explain to a client yeah. you know yeah. especially people that are looking at numbers and yeah executives and all that yeah, yeah. So that's what, that's what we try though. to do is yeah. communicate a feeling even in our best like ad work yeah um we try yeah i mean gosh the one that just popped in my head which actually i was talking to somebody today and i said that you're coming in is wes walker and he's a photographer. Yeah. And he mentioned the Coors Banquet one that you guys uh, shot. Super yeah, that was dope. That is insane. Yeah. And I don't think there's really even that much Coors Banquet in it. No. But you, re- yeah. you really get the feeling of what Coors is about. You know, and the challenge for that is, like, we had to shoot that in South America. Mm. Oh, we wanted it to right. be American. Yeah, but, where, where yeah. was the horses shot? in South America, in Chile. And the horses are tiny. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, there's some good cowboys down there, you know? So you guys just look like your your traditional American square jaw cowboy, but that was kind of the point. It was like, it's bigger. Um, So we fly down there and we find, we go to rodeos and, you know, we send casting people too and and find the right people and then try to kind of engineer it down there. Can we pull that one up? Yeah. Uh, what's that? Is it a budget thing while it's done? Yeah, in yeah I was okay. going to say. Yeah, yeah. The what, dollar. What is yeah. the name of that one? Is it like Code of the West? or? Yeah, that's okay. Britton yeah. Cayouette. I mean, he really crushed it on that. I mean, so Brit is a scholar of the West, too. Studied, you know, like Western history at, at Stanford. So he would just really, you know, you know, tried to craft each image in that thing. Yeah. Um, and, and also push it forward. I think that's what we, we try to do. Yeah. It was so insane. I remember watching it for the first time, and I was like, holy shit, who made that? Feels like a good yeah. ad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. I think just in general with Farm League, like, well, touching on Case's point when we first started following you guys, at the beginning it was, like, almost peer-to-peer in our eyes because, like, who are these guys just making, like, really sick films? And then you kind of go down the rabbit hole and, like, holy shit, they make really sick films, and then it just gets crazier and crazier, like... The amount of clients you have and like the the quality you guys put into your stuff is yeah and from like surf to nba to like when you yeah. guys started approaching nba i was like this is this is like the yeti and the stance of films you i know, know like, i wish i would have done the stance thing <laughs> yeah like this is huge is it oh carry the west, carry the west. oh man that camera there's a code out here a little sam elliot it's not written but it's understood that nothing can be taken from a man who has freedom. I mean, the landscapes are yeah, crazy. Yeah. Are you down there for this? Yeah. Yeah. Smaller. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get a tiny cowboy. Get low on it. and carry on the everlasting spirit of the West. God, they must pay Sam Elliott so much. <laughs> he is so iconic for that. I, I bet you know how much. I mean, I, I don't know that, but he, yeah. 
He's worth it. Worth every oh, dollar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he's a legend. Yeah. Damn, I've never seen this full cut actually. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's like there a what is. I call win-win. When, so when the brand aligns, yeah. they you, they give you enough freedom to yeah. make something that you think is really going to pop, and and they support you know, it. Yeah, support yeah. it. Yeah, that's amazing. Damn, yeah, that's cool. yeah. Shout pretty out much why we work with them. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's, yeah, it's just like in our brand DNA to do that right yeah. there, and they yeah. support it. So yeah. it's pretty cool. It's been yeah, like five cool. years now, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, gnarly. Yeah. But that's cool. Insane. Yeah. yeah, it's cool to see how that all lines up. So how much did they pay San Eli? We'll Every say, penny is worth penny, it. But He's, speaking yeah. of, speaking I think of, uh, there's a good story with Chris and him when Chris was get working with him in the booth um, for voiceover. It was a Ram because we do Ram too. We do a lot of trucks and oh, SUVs sick. and that sort of stuff. And he's so gracious to give you like a little bit of like if you ask him, hey, we need one more. I mean, could you could you read it like this or whatever it is? You got to yeah. give him a little. And he's like. Nah, I'm gonna do it my way. Oh, <laughs> That's, you know, he was cool. I don't think he like, you know, snubbed anybody. Yeah, it's yeah. Like he he listens, and then I, you know, I think he's just, you're Sam, you're Sam. Yeah, yeah I mean, he knows his worth, and yeah. he's earned it. You know, yeah. like he I doesn't mean, say no, but then he reads it the same right. way he's gonna read it. Yeah. <laughs> That's epic. Yeah, I mean, he's probably like 80 now, isn't he? 70? <laughs> or am I just tripping? He, he's great. He's a silver fox, right? He could oh, be like yeah. 60 for all I know. I mean, he was just in uh, 1823 or 1893. 78. Yeah. 78. 18, wow, 18, that's pretty close. 1923. Which yeah. one was it? From Sacramento. 1883? Yeah, I forget which one it was, honestly. Yeah. I mean. But it was good. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. Damn. And the Malloys. I mean, your whole crew. It's like your, your whole team and everyone that's in your movies and stuff are just all legends in their own way. It's crazy. Pretty, pretty amazing yeah. group of people. I'm pre- yeah, I feel I feel real honored to be working with them. And um, and then we got a whole new generation, too, you know. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like that's the thing is surround yourself with good people. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for so sure. So easy. It's not always easy to do. but Totally. Um, yeah, so we got a good crew. No doubt. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that is awesome. So, what do you? Uh, how do you involve yourself in Farm League now? Are you leading the pack? Are you filming creative? I mean, I kind of do everything that I yeah. can, and I, um, you know, that's not to say uh, there's not like big contributors from everybody, but I mean, I, I run the business, so I got to do that. Mm-hmm. I got to do a little bit of sales, which isn't a natural thing for me. You know, I got to get out there and kind of hustle. Yeah. Got to help persuade people why you know. I got to help think through the issues, you know, like whatever they are, um, the creative, mm-hmm. how to sell it. Because a lot of times, if you want it, we want to do something different. We really got to kind of come up with like a hook to get them to buy off on it. Yeah, totally. Especially yeah. in the brand world, it can be really prescriptive. You know, we can get, I mean, we do everything from like brains, create ideas to like take an idea and just execute it, you know? Right. And um, so that's the balance. I love that about it. I kind of get to do that range. Mm hmm. Um, it's interesting too, because obviously it's all client work, but everything that you guys shoot reflects on you too. So like their uh, changes cool. are affecting you and how you look. Yeah, right. Well, the portfolio. Cool. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of stuff you guys haven't seen. Oh, really? <laughs> they just don't make the cut. <laughs> you skipped on your, you know, uh, on your feet yeah, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got to do a little bit of that. Yeah. But, um, but we try, man. We like I said, we try really hard to make every piece, you know sing or give it its due and then when it's time to let it go let it go and yeah. move on to the next for sure um do you guys ever do like passion projects that aren't all the time oh really yeah i try we need to do more to be honest with you yeah Damn. and you just kind of self-fund that or how does that work to just yeah, bring in we sponsors try or something? to get well if, if we have some time we develop it and then yeah. try to go out and pitch it oh nice yeah to all and like then, the uh, netflixes and all those kind of to, people to everything from streamers to yeah. brands you know oh, okay and small brands the one thing that i did on 180 that was kind of ahead of its time was i I got Kashi to sponsor it. Huh. You know, there was like Damn. we needed some extra money to go yeah. down there and do it, and they put it on a cereal box. I was like, this is going to be great Whoa, on the back of a cereal crazy. box. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> that's we awesome. did. So like Jeff Johnson and <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. All the artwork, yeah, and I think they made like a couple hundred thousand. They were like, wait, why are we in <laughs> movie business? <laughs> that's that's insane. I don't know. But it was a good. That. It was a good merging of like a brand that stood for something, and especially when they were you know young and new, and it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. organic yeah. cereal. Yeah, for um, sure. with good on what them. we were trying to do. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I always feel like there's opportunity. You have to know the limitations, and there's For definitely. Sure. But 
trying to pair the right brand with it or just make it yeah. and then sell it or, you know, just get a community to help pay for it. Totally. I'm not sure how familiar you are, familiar you are with Seeger, um, but we've basically started the business doing that exact thing yeah. where all of our marketing trips were basically paid for uh, from other brands. And I feel like we can get to the... We yeah, we're all working that. on the I want to hear the origin story yeah. for sure. Cause, yeah. yeah. Um, I ran into it in, te- in Texas. Oh, oh hell yeah. And I saw Sweet. it here, and I was sick. like, all right. Where in Texas? In I think I was in Austin. My oh, brother sick. lives in Austin. We shoot in Austin a lot. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we My love it down there. in San Antonio. So. Sick. Did you see it on somebody? I saw it on a truck. No, oh, like what? big. Hey. On a I saw, like, the How back, big? The, like the back Oh, window. the detail. Yeah. The de- yeah it was going, bigger like, than big? normal. I feel like it was big. <laughs> Damn, they must have custom made that <laughs> yeah. or something. Well, yeah. And I was like, Stuck oh, out because like, obviously Who I'm a Dodgers that? fan and I knew Corey Seager. Okay. And, oh. and I had just the, you know, just the brand had like, I knew what it, I, it, it communicated to me. Yeah, yeah. And it was like a, a cool dude in a truck. Sick. And was it a nice, what kind of truck was it? I can't remember. Okay. Ram. Okay. <laughs> something, it was something cool, but yeah. it wasn't like too 1994. Perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he knew his Dirty. shit and he yeah. had it. And I was like, huh. And then I saw it here too. And I was like, damn. Well, that's cool. You guys, because you walk in kind of a little bit of the same thing. You walk in the, in the kind of outdoor uh, lifestyle mm-hmm. zone and then definitely the Western thing. Yeah. Right yeah. Down, yeah. yeah absolutely. For so sure. I, I love that. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's like you were saying, your story of growing up in Houston and then like with the football background and all that, the classic small town, right? And then coming out of California, that. We're kind of from the other end of that, you know, like we're trying to, we're approaching it from the other end, like us growing up here and in the action sports space, but always being intrigued and interested, especially with like old California roots, you know, with all the history, especially around here in San Clemente and in San Juan, there's a lot of cool history that we tapped more and more into. And, you know, anyone who's like a lot of the older folk, you know, who have been here for a long time have seen it develop and change. But before that, it was all farmland. And so we're kind of just tapping into those roots, you know, but trying to learn more and approach the outdoors Western space, you know, and, and connect the two. But it's that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like trying to uh, trying to bring that history forward. I think is a big part of what we try to do. Yeah, and, and some of the docs we've done and beyond, you know, um, and we all get so separated from it, but it's kind of right there. Yeah, so. yeah, it really is. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And to, to push more too on what Matson was saying, just because I feel like that needed more clarity. Uh, we started with no money, like right. actually no money. And so when we would go out and shoot product, we didn't have like any sort of marketing expense or budget. So we would reach out to just like a local brand or I don't even know one of the first ones. Local beer is what we started reaching out to yeah. and just get like a 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. And that's yeah. what made it so we can go on the trip, yeah. Yeah. shoot our own product, send them some photos, maybe make them a video. Made them all cheap. Yeah. And we have done that till this day. Yeah. So that's why we have partnerships with people like Horse Banquet. And yeah. it's obviously grown and evolved, but yeah. we were so bootstrapping it. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, still are. Yeah. 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 I mean, in yeah. some ways, I think we all are. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of the best way to run a business. Totally. Um, that way you can stay flexible and you can do, yeah. you can put the, you know. You can have a message, of, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. you really lose that, I feel like. A lot of the, we've, you know, chatted with other people from larger brands that kind of have a different, financial backing approach to it you know and when there's when it's kind of profit driven or maybe growth driven or something like that where it's strictly financial i feel like you can't do what we want to do you know whether that's a product or like in your you know like media marketing stuff like that it's it's a hard balance to play you know and as we keep growing it's a ever-growing challenge i feel like and what i've been trying to do you know especially with at first it was like grow the company grow grow and I, you know i think that there'll be there might be another turn for that mm-hmm. but right now i'm like make the business just work better for the people that are part of it you yeah know? that's kind of where, where i am right now that's awesome but that still means you gotta you know put shit out yeah there, still gotta know? hustle yeah totally i'm i'm curious uh what what the parts of that book that you wanted to share and what you <laughs> highlighted I mean, I, and stuff in that so I mean, I just find him pretty fascinating, Rick Rubin. And I, you know, I, I almost, I almost think the book's too much in a way, <laughs> not to say, but yeah. he's, um, I mean, the fact that he can work with the artists of the scale that he does, yeah. I mean, and the range from hip hop to country to pop to hardcore, you know, I, I just, you know, as a producer, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, he has a technique, a way, a process. We talk a lot about process. Because I think that's so important, just like defining, refining your process, so that you know, you know, you can make 
so things feel right to you because you can't yeah. just be making new decisions every time you get something. There's just too many to make. You want to kind of know, okay, this is what I do in this scenario. But you want to be, you want to approach things fresh as well. But you know, he's been able to do that. He's been able to, um, you know, bring in artists that have nothing, and you know, and, and like you know, the, the story with Johnny Cash is pretty great too, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, Johnny was pretty broken down. He just was mm-hmm. like, start playing me music. Let's just talk about music and. It evolved from there. It was really about building his confidence back, and um, you know, believing in him. I don't know. Yeah. So there, so there's some great shit in there. There's some shit that's like really esoteric and like yeah. out there. But I'm like, makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like an oracle. I yeah, feel like. like a modern day like yeah. guru or some sort. You know, yeah. And I, and you know, and and understanding how he works a little bit, it's like. Some of that, you know, that's the thing is like the most interesting people. Rick, we talked about Yvonne earlier. Um, they're really complex. They're really layered people. And, you know, there's that one thing going on, which is super Zen-like, but he's also like a puppet master in a way. Oh, really? Just pulling the strings on yeah. all that. He knows what he, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but he's a genius. So, I, yeah, I enjoyed reading it. We talked about it a lot, of, you know, with the, the team uh, or some of the team, you know, that, that um, respond to him. And he's, uh, there's definitely some shit that we're, you know, highlighted and sent each other. Everybody's like, this is a good way to approach edits with clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you guys that's do sweet. like a, a book club kind of thing? With I loved, you know, that's what I wanted to do a book club. Yeah. To be with you. With your team, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. with friends and okay. like, honestly, because uh, it's just so hard to read. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been I, I have a goal slowly. to finish 12 books this year. Whoa. What are month, you on? One a month. Are you there? Are you um, on, on yeah, trending? I'm, well, I'm on my fourth, yeah. Wow, I'm good for you. I'm so bad at it, yeah. but I'm trying to read yeah. more. Yeah. And I'll well, start I got with that you book. one. Yeah. I'll start with that book. You guys want to start a yeah. book club? Oh, start yeah. a book club. Yeah. Let's go. So I'll hold you accountable. Did you already read through it completely? <laughs> I got through it, and then I bought it on audio, and I listened to it again. Smart. Got okay. yeah. And, um... Yeah, because it's so that. hard to read. I'm doing so much all the time. Yeah, really audio hard, books but... have changed my game. To be yeah. honest, I yeah. could do a book a month easy, just seven hours. You know. Yeah, yeah. you probably already have. I've yeah. I, <laughs> I ever since I got Audible, because growing up, I was not <laughs> dyslexic or anything. I, my dad is. I'm not. I don't think. But reading just <laughs> and sucked for me. Wrong and there's nothing wrong, wrong with that. that. Reading just sucked for me. I never did it. It's I, hard for my me comprehension too. in college. I prided myself on never reading. Yeah, I would uh, just kind of like talk to people and figure it out, and in class learn it. But horrible at it until Audible came out, and that they're not a sponsor. But holy shit, <laughs> changed you. my game. Audible. Now I'm like psyched on books. No, I'm like, it's what? true. I've been missing it's true. this. True, I do. I do a lot of audio. I do more audio books. Than uh, I yeah, for sure. It's really nice to get audio and read the book. Yeah, because you can kind of like hit them both. And yeah. the the apps with um, I don't know if you have hit it from behind. Though. Um, what's it called? Uh, Kindle. Oh yeah, Kindle thing. Kindles they, help me. They on the sync up reading. with Audible, so oh, like really? if you read to a certain page, then you listen to your car in the Audible. It'll oh, that's up wait. So if you buy it on Kindle, it's both. Yeah. Oh, my. it's freaking insane. So you can like listen in your car, come back, and it'll pick up. It'll say, "You just read 15 pages." That's nice. That's pretty really cool. Yeah. And like it'll skip to that page. Do you guys read while exercising? No. Or is that what? How? No. What do you I, mean? I saw like audio. Yeah, audio. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Kayla all. Does that? Does she? Well, that's, that's all yeah. I do. Oh, yeah, if she's on, like, a treadmill or something. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, physically read. But I'm an audiobook. That's what I do. I'll be, like, yeah. lifting, right? I'll be doing, like, curls or something, right? I'm trying to get fired up. I'm listening. Harry Potter. I'm listening to Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, this is so weird. Like, everyone around me is just, like, filming themselves, benching and shit. And I'm just listening filming to Carl Sagan. Oh, yeah. Everyone? You don't see that? I everyone? Mean, at no. least what gym do you go to? I don't 24-hour fitness, baby. At least, uh, <laughs> at least three a day. I'm seeing. Really? Yeah, like full. And then that's Damn. just the ones I'm seeing. That's just like yeah. full setup. You know what I mean? Like phone Damn. on a mount. Are they jacked? Are they looking good? <sighs> sometimes. Sometimes uh, maybe they're just getting into I'm, it. I intermediate. Mean, I, yeah, you know? it helps to see form. Yeah, see I your guess. form. Yeah. Right? You don't have a don't friend spot. You know, I mean, the reading thing for me, though, I feel that. It's so hard. I, oh, mean, yeah. I torture my team because everything I get in like written form, I like upload to a program and I have it read, read it. Oh, and nice. then I read it with it just so Damn. I can track it. Oh, nice. yeah. yeah. Wow. So I got yeah. a, a ton of shit like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gets me through it. Totally. You know, I think. You just learn so much. I know. <laughs> it's I like know. when you can do it, you know, and then when you can talk about it, which is why the book club's so important. Yeah, one hundred percent. Talk about yeah. it. I haven't been in that. Well, I guess college is kind of like a big book club. That's <laughs> okay. one way to look at it. That's yeah. a stretch. It's expensive. It is. I mean, it's an expensive go, book. Club. Yeah, very expensive. You book guys club. are inspiring me though. 
to read? I'm going to read a little bit You more. should read. Hopefully yeah, everyone listening should read. It's I good. Mean, even yeah. if you read, like, anything, you, yeah. know, you just read it. Well, I'm reading that. I have that book to read. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's an yeah. easy one, too. The yeah. nice thing, for this is for good for you, too. Yeah, yeah. The chapters are, like, two pages. I know, until the end. Then it yeah. starts getting gnarly. Two I'm pages. like, bro, come on. <laughs> Three-page chapter. <laughs> yeah, I'm so used to, like, a page. That's, like, a, there's another book. I think it's called The Art of War. No, The War of Art. Yeah, backwards. backwards. I think it's Stephen Pressfield. I can't remember the name, but Zen San. Zen, no, 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 no. Way around. Not, I'm yeah. I'm kidding. No, no. And that's Zen Never mind. There's, there's yeah. Joke, there's the <laughs> art of war, but the yeah, the war of art. Okay, we'll cut creative that book. I don't know if you've read that one. It's a <laughs> no. cool book. It's not you know, it's different style, but really short chapters too. It's more of just kind of ideas. Yeah. And that's kind of how my brain works. I'm like, I can, I see a chapter, give me two pages. Of that, yeah. You know what I mean? And then I'm good. I want to be able to step away and come back. You know. But when, yeah. once you start going, and yeah, it's not my brain. It's tough. Yeah. The same Rocky Mountain water, the same brewing tradition that started in 1873 in Golden, Colorado. Because when you're a favorite beer of rock stars, smugglers, cowboys, and presidents, you don't compromise. That's our legacy. What do you want to go down in history for? Coors Banquet. Start your legacy. We want to give a shout out to a sponsor of today's episode, Desert Door Sotol. Desert Door Soto, the most premium spirit distilled in Driftwood, Texas. Desert Desert Door is wildly harvested, fermented, distilled, and bottled by Desert Door in Driftwood, Texas. Check them out at DesertDoor.com. Not sorry, I was gonna say not to get off of like this book talk. No, no, no. But I just randomly had an idea in my mind or a question I wanted to ask. Um, basically, when you were starting the agency, how did you get directors? Um, like on your team. It's a good, you know? call. yeah, it's a good, it was, um, like how, how did that process well, I was, work? I was working enough in town that I knew some, I had that, um, and I was working with, um, Chris Malloy and, and Emmett and a few other people. And like, so I was, I don't know. I just, I, I knew enough people to bring in and then we built some, you know, we knew some, there was some talented young people that just needed some chance, yeah. you know, and like we, I knew enough, and we still do that, you know. It's like we look for certain things, and whether it's creatives or directors, or um, it's kind of like an ingredient list usually. And it's yeah. not always like always prescriptive or the same thing, but there's usually a number of things that they need to pop. I look for that, and then um, we try to just help develop them. You know, we develop them, and and then you know try to go I'm, for. I'm them. curious about the director role because, well, on our trips we kind of don't have a director like a lot of times no, I mean, Eli's like oh wah, no, no. Wah, wah. Eli, <laughs> Eli is the director essentially but we all like he, he does On paper, a lot of the filming yeah. and then we have a lot of producers in the background like everyone's just kind of telling like coming up with things on the spot and whatever it is um, but Eli you do most of the stuff I'm not taking <laughs> I'm just saying I don't really know like what does a director do in a, like a in a normal role like with you guys like is he more of the creative side or is he like like making sure the thing is running smoothly it to the depends. plan. It depends. I mean, and what you described is also some of the biggest shoots we do. It's like there's, I mean, the best really when, when you're, especially on a shoot day, like we were shooting in Vancouver last week. I think we had 150 crew on a backlog. Wild. Manufacturing. Not even so, manage that many people. I yeah, get that. it's intense. So you definitely need the decision tree to kind of totally. operate a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the creative director at the agency, um, on you know, or or uh, there's a variety of people, that, or the, the guy, the, the, mar the head of marketing at the brand, you know, might have either a good idea or something good to say or all that needs to be factored in. Mm -hmm. So the best version of it is like a really tight-knit, team that's operating yeah. you know yeah and the director's making the call on the day on you know certain things and um and uh they so the just... producer in a, in a normal way a producer kind of makes sure things go the right way but the director also does that I'm, I'm yeah i mean the director's gonna make a lot of decisions yeah. you it's know like, back like and it's forth. like a yeah it's, yeah it's kind of um you know i mean i'm a producer so i like to think about 
that, but I, I think it's creative. I, I believe it is. I know it is. I mean, we did a project with Jeff McFetridge a while ago, who um, so inspiring to me. And it's like there's two types of creativity. He talks about it, and uh, you know, there's the the coming up with an idea, yeah. creative, and then there's the like servicing the idea. It's yeah. like it's like engineering. It's woodworking. It's bringing that thing to life because within that, there's so many decisions and so much nuance, and there's such a touch that's got to bring something either to market, you know, whether it's product or to life. And, like, you know, good directors do both those. Good producers do those well, and they, yeah. and they work together. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I like to do both. I like to come up, help come up with ideas or try to make an idea better or, or just, like, workshop the thing to how we're going to get it through. Totally. You know, or pull it off or, you know, and a lot of times, you know, those are the kind of constraints that yeah. come about. but. Yeah, the, there's that show about the making of the movie The Godfather. I love it. Yeah, I've seen that show. That, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a show. It's a great a, show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's called Miles the, Teller. Yeah, it's called The Offer. I've talked about it multiple I times. Know, I know. I to watch that. Yeah. It's cool because it show, he's just a, the producer of The Godfather, right? Yeah. But it shows how much shit he had to go through. That's it. From from the very start of like we got a script, now you have to put together everything else, and like of course he's not the one touching the camera, mm -hmm. or he's not the one doing a lot of things but like everyone comes to him if there's an issue he's, he's the problem us. solver of, yeah. of everything you know yeah um but he's not the director okay yeah. so it's like that's where the producer there's a in. lot of back and forth too like and the director they talk day-to-day -day kind of thing like or while they're filming i mean no i mean it's yeah. I, I it's different in every well it's not that's not true it's it's it, the director really needs to like pull out the idea Right. Yeah. And he needs to be respond. Or she. I uh, shouldn't say he because we, right. we have some great yeah. women directors. Um, you know, it's like it should run through that filter. I mean, yeah. the best work, I believe, is personal for everybody. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it should run through their internal filter. Now, that's hard on uh, with brand stuff because, you you know, there's a brand, there's a yeah. brief, there's like an agenda a little yeah. bit, you mm -hmm. know, but still even the best like spots. um still need to kind of you can just funnel through that but very often that when when a creative team or creative director or all that stuff's kind of synced up because everybody's thinking about different things um and the director on the day is a lot about the performance if there is a performance and sometimes that performance is real subtle you know yeah. it's like i need you to hold this thing <laughs> yeah okay, <laughs> but got you got to do it right because yeah. we all recognize yeah. when they don't yeah. you know For they're sure. like the creative uh, soul behind it too yeah I guess most of the yeah. time, or what I've seen from yeah. from the offer. There's a great line that the the character has in that, which is like basically, which I I feel like is farm league. It's like at some point, who we are and what we do merge, because like he's living and breathing that movie yeah. in that series. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fun to watch, and so like, and that's what I always thought farm league was. It was like bring the worlds together. I was working so hard, you know, for my my passions. I was like, I want to blend those things because. Yeah. You know, it'll just and it'll make more honest work. Uh, For sure, that's the thing. You know, and so um, that's when the when I heard, when I saw that line, I was like, "That's it." <laughs> that's, that's an awesome line. Yeah. So, are all the directors at Farm League? Are they on retainer? Or are they just kind of like faces no. that you could pick and choose? Well, it's complicated for us, but um, there we have a roster of directors that we you know choose. Yeah. And want to work with and try to you know develop or help or or push or support you know and so it's sort of a collection it's yeah. kind of like a a label a record label in yeah, a way yeah. you know and you want certain artists that represent certain things different people doing different things um and uh yeah we've got a small roster for most companies like us most of them have 30 or three or four times what we have oh really yeah wow. and by roster are those people just kind of like waiting for the chance like they're that's right their, everybody's just looking to get the shot they're just yeah. Yeah. those people Literally. On, those people on your roster they're they're doing other things but once you hit them up they're like, yeah the best the best version of it is you know everybody's got something else they're doing because no one likes to sit around and like it's hardest for actors to be honest with you because mm -hmm. it's like they you just got to be ready yeah seriously and then you got to walk into a room and in just a few minutes be able to take a script or a moment of yeah, scene from a film. Yeah, I cannot imagine that. And then you got to go on. wait. So you have to stay interested in growing on your own. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and and that's you know that's what that's, that's what it takes. That's but it's great. tough. It's a really tough business, you know, and it's crushed a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I and um, 
there's only so much so much room yeah it sounds like a sh very stressful business to be a part of <laughs> I mean, for sure yeah. not that any business yeah. isn't stressful but yeah. just yeah. hollywood and actors and directors well, and the, the 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 timelines we work on i think are entirely unique especially in the sort of brand side of the business like we're working sometimes in two three week incre increments and trying to come up or you know produce a shoot make a shoot um and that's and we're spending you know sometimes half a million dollars or double triple that in a very short amount of time yeah. so it's like all those decisions can just really add up and you can yeah. get over your skis super fast yeah Damn. what's the biggest budget you guys have ever worked with a couple million bucks wild yeah, yeah. on, on uh, just like a one minute spot i mean i gotta think one of them i don't know if it was the biggest but another big one was all 15 second spots <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> But That's I mean, the more crazy. you want to sort of curate what's in the frame and the more you want to talk about it and the more you want to sort of like develop that, it's just time, right? Yeah. And, and energy. And then if it's a big idea and you need locations. And yeah. I mean, this thing we were shooting last week was is going to be really cool. It didn't come out for end of the year, I think. But, um, you know, we were on a back lot. It had to look like it was, you know, zero degrees. It was fucking raining. So we had <laughs> to like, you know, we had to make snow, create snow, blow snow. Damn. Um, we basically made a little town huh. and um you know it was a lot and it had to move because every hour's a fortune you know yeah. and so yeah. you need everybody to be on their game yeah i bet you that's stressful yeah, yeah. That's, that's what i was so just thinking that's like, oh, that's oh, hectic. No. Yeah, that's hectic. well because it rained and then you're yeah. just kind of sitting around and you're making calls okay oh we you know you can kind of play it out in yeah. your head the snow machine's on go 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 <laughs> 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 Actor messes up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or gets hurt or slips. Yeah. There was like dance in it. It's cool. Oh, it's like an outdoor yeah. thing with like yeah. dance. Oh, that's Damn. Cool. It's new for Interesting. us. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. A little musical. Wait, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've won an Academy Award? No. Okay. Grammy. Grammy. A Grammy yeah. and okay. a Moon Man for Fuck okay. okay. yeah. Sorry. But I, I messed that Academy up. Academy Awards. <laughs> 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 okay, pass that again. Academy Awards. <laughs> yeah. That'll be our clip. That's That'll close. be our clip. No, Grammy is really freaking cool. Yeah, what was that like? Super cool. Yeah. That was that was an amazing. I mean, and then we were nominated for another, and we didn't win. We I think we lost to Paul McCartney for a music. Fuck wow. it, that's a good runner up yeah. right there, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so how did you win a Grammy? What was it? What was that? It was a <laughs> film called Big Easy Express. Okay. Um, and it was this. It was like a, basically a tour film, but it was. It's just kind of deeper than that. I talk about a movie that kind of gives you, I think, the goosebumps. So it's it was Mumford and Sons Old Crow Medicine Show. Damn. And um. Ah, oh, who else? Some great band, some great music. And they basically got a train. The promoter got a train and went from yeah. San Francisco to New Orleans. And they stopped and played, got back on the train, and we just docu made the, a film out of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Damn. Um, and it was, was special. It was, a, it was like a 10-day span, maybe. It was like it a was train special. just for... Just for the band. That's so sick. Like flying a, through the yeah, West Texas or yeah. New Mexico with the doors open. They're, they're playing music all no night. Way. Uh, I actually, so I've sick. seen little bits and pieces from that for sure. It's a, it's a, it's, it was an crazy I would crazy love to be on that. Um, Edward Sharp. That was one of the oh, favorite wow. yeah. Edward Sharp. That was one of your favorite bands. It was the band I wanted to see live the most. Okay, it's different. Across the country. <laughs> They're cool. The way they Edward shot yeah. more than Rupert. 100 years Whoa. ago. Whoa. Alexander? I mean, the train? Yeah. yeah. Is this a piece train. of the film right here? Whoa, look at that. California Zephyr. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they tried to make, they tried to do another one with like, a thick man. I think like Where's David Brothers and the train, Boss. Got it all. They tried to do another. Like that looks so fun. So people, people were. Would they show up and play a show, or like would people show every up every night, or almost every night? Wow. There was a different show. Oh my god! And it was this cast of characters, oh, and they so were creating sick. music. Ah. I mean, this is, uh, and you know, Emmett Malloy directed that and really um, what a crazy tapped man. into something special. I mean, there was this sort of um, this it. this exchange between the musicians that was pretty incredible I bet. to witness, and and the music flow. And then we took them to a oh, high school in Austin, band. and then they brought the the <laughs> The school up on stage, the yeah, marching cool. band. That is yeah. so rad. Wait, so I haven't but, heard the name Emmett Molloy. Which one? Is yeah. that a cousin? It's a cousin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What a crazy family, though. Yeah, big family. Shout yeah. out to the Molloys. It's like the they're all, all talented. And, yeah, yeah. You know, insane. in their own right, they're yeah. all kind of different, but they're so all those really types of super talented. I know, right? So Wait, so that was just holiday. Mumford and Sons, Edward Sharp with Magnetic Zeros. I saw one other person. Old Crow Medicine Show. Yeah. Damn, they were all on the same tour. Oh yeah, it was that's, that's wild. Insane. Who paid for that? Like, how does that even so happen? So the promoter, 
Um, and we sold it to, uh, I can't remember what streaming service, but maybe Amazon or something. But, you know, they were the, the promoter, because we shot this all in 16 millimeter, and we wanted That's a so certain sick. tone and feel to it, you know? And so, um, but w this was meant to be another, it was meant to be another one of these. It's just so expensive, those yeah. cranes. It was so expensive to produce for the promoter. I'm That's in. Insane. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm yeah. in. I'll be on it. I was like, I was I'll like, I'll just be an too. Like all those bands. I was like, yeah. That was cool. Epic. It was, it was, it was an unbelievable thing to be able to do. They literally pulled up in Long Beach, played a show, got back on the train with like, and think about it, a train is yeah. like a like or you know the train tracks are like the FAA and like yeah. it's like the airport. You can't fuck around with those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah people. You have you know they're all everybody's drunk and having yeah. a good time and playing music and hanging on to the train. I yeah. feel like that's the one that's public insane. transport yeah. you can still party <laughs> yeah, hard on. Maybe <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe. Like buses, no chance. Maybe like a Greyhound. I feel like you could get away with it, yeah. but. Well, not the same. That was eight really years ago, buses. but there was still. Like, yeah, but that's not like I'm talking like long distance transport. Like party bus, you're going like an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? Otherwise, there's no bathroom. They you know they mean? really assembled Never like the most beautiful <laughs> cars too. Like Damn. all the old. Yeah, they yeah. looked yeah. epic. Yeah, it looked really cool. Parties yeah, must have been off jealous. the tracks. Very jealous. Oh come on. I have really? a question. It's <laughs> on that one. Hit it. Hit it. Uh, so when I was interning, you guys were like wrapping up Blue Heart, the Blue yeah. Heart film. Yeah. I'm just curious on like how those stories are found to be told, you know, and just like some of the subjects that mm -hmm. you guys found, because like the compositions and like with everything was insane. Yeah. Was, like, how do you like logistically figure that out? I mean, that I, all credit to not all, but Brit Brit Cayouette is the visionary behind that film. That was cool. That was, that's a special project for us. It was insane. Yeah, um, that was like when we I first were got there. A lot with Patagonia at the time, and they were generous enough to be like we want to make films about the environment yeah. you know and so this was a this was a story of um in the balkans about you know the the devastation that the hydropower has done in the region and uh you know they had basically came to us and said we want to make a film about this but we don't know what it is so Britt had yeah. to find a story Whoa. It. Um, that's insane and it's very much his style um you know which is kind of step back watching wow. um really observational in a beautiful yeah. beautiful way um and they basically just there was just news about that they've um like there's been a huge victory for uh, against hydropower i think they're gonna rip oh, out wow. a lot Damn. of these things so Sick. that film you know made it made an impact it was really the people in the region damn that, so hydropower um, power is not a good thing no, I it's like, yeah. yeah. What's the it's issue? Fossil fuels is what is you like, want. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it like yeah. dams the rivers. And yeah, it right? really fucks up the ecosystems. You know, uh, interesting. I should, it's been a minute, but I mean, and Yvonne, again, Patagonia has led the way on this yeah, they um, have. because it starves, you know, valleys and everything. Yeah. Or, or it floods valleys. Right. You know, sometimes they just they build a dam and they mm -hmm. flood. So yeah. in this case, a lot of the the villagers just were like, hey, in next year. Your place is gonna be underwater, so you need to move. Oh, wow! You know, and yeah. um, and then That's and so then the rivers don't flow and replenish like they used to, right? You know, there's this sort of ebb. Yeah. It's like you know, you know, the beaches here. Yeah, exactly. So like oh how the God. sandbars work so and everything else. So pissed about that. So this, I mean, this is like imagine Yosemite yeah. times a hundred in that region, oh. and people just ran power lines and you know dams all through it, and it's just. Damn. It's just, and it, Literally. you know, and then the communities too, they've been devastated. So, um, yeah, that was cool. That was a good one. But Brit, you know, Brit really, um, crafted a story out of something that wasn't Fuck. easy to find. Yeah. That's you pretty know? wild. Cause obviously they probably made this thinking it was a really good thing. Yeah. Like, you know, but the, uh, the dam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, That's what we, we, you come to find out is like the world bank and all these things, they really, you know, I think there's some good intentions, but there's also a lot of money. Behind oh, for sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're right, because some of those dams are 20, 30, 50 years old or whatever it is. Yeah. But um, yeah. there's been enough sort of, like, evidence and, you know, Data. destruction to yeah. the communities that people Interesting. are. Yeah. I'm gonna I mean, I don't know it's anything fun. about the subject, so I shouldn't talk. No. But like, Lake Powell, don't they have a hydropower Hoover dam? Hoover Yeah. Are you talking like, about? Is that really bad? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, Patagonia is Interesting. amongst a lot of people that are trying to get us to think differently about the way wow. we, yeah, yeah. yeah. think about the rivers, that. you know, and look at the Colorado. So, 
Um, but yeah, it's kind of like one of those things with like electrical vehicles, right? Yeah. And, and the batteries and all the mining and everything. Yeah. So you got to really consider it all and all the unintended things that happen. That's yeah. still a pretty untold story too. What? Like all the all the crazy slavery mining for oh, electric yeah, vehicle yeah, yeah. batteries. And digital products, cell phones, yeah. all those things, yeah. yeah. Nobody <laughs> really talks about that. It's crazy. Yeah, well, except Joe Rogan. To talk about that. <laughs> yeah, right? I know, I know nothing about that shit. But. Well, it's just kind of like the same uh, thing where we all think it's a good thing right now. Probably how 60 years ago the dams were a good thing. Yeah. You know? and then yeah, you live and you learn. There's just like so many freaking variables that you're screwing up something else because you're trying to do this right. good thing. and then I feel like the problem is the money. Visible. What was that? A lot of it's irreversible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Just because right. there's so much money already put into it? Well, because because once you do it, you know, you once the you change the done. trajectory of a river, a river system, you know, a whole ecosystem about where, how wow. it works, how it floods the valley, you know, fertilizes. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, it's... Butterfly <laughs> effect. Yeah. I'll have to check this out. <laughs> Learn something. <laughs> All of Britain's That's a good movie. It's insane. That's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Wax... Wax and Gold, yeah. right? That's another one. That's like a Stumptown one. Yeah. But Wax. just the way he shoots, or whoever he's shoots. He's got a new stuff. one we're doing with with a Yeti that's supposed nice. to come out later this year. Sick. Hopefully. Sick. Like it. It's really good. Yeah. Just all the mixed media, like the black and white 16 here, like makes it feel like, I feel like you resonate with it because you think it's something from like World War II, but it's like going <laughs> yeah. on right now. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's You're the just, subtle like, stuff we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, so it's heavy. Like little, little choices um, all the way around can really create a feeling when you watch something. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a lot to learn. Yeah. <laughs> so you said Yeti, and we've obviously just talked about Scott Ballou too, but is that that connection? Was it because Scott was looking to make so many films? Because we've done one of these with Scott, actually. Yeah. And we learned a lot about no, it. No, Scott was Crazy working for story. us. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, Scott was um, in L.A. Uh, producing or trying to produce. And That's right. And he came, uh, came to Damn. meet me and was like, I want to work here and um, – and we hired him. He was he freelanced for us for a while, and then Yeti was just getting going. And they met him on one of our jobs. Insane! And they're like, we wow, want, we want you. Damn. Yeah. So he and he was producing at that time, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, whole story. I mean, he's right the now. perfect guy for that Yeti job. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah, they really he's got scored a good, with that. Good thing there. Yeah. And, so were you, um, were you sad at that point when he left, or was it like an? Exciting <laughs> we no, you know, for me, it's like we've had some great fucking people come through the doors. I'm honored by that, honestly. Yeah. It's like. Um, people that gone on to do some really cool bigger shit yeah. <laughs> in a way. Um, so I love it. You know, interns too. I was just saying like some of the interns are like, are, are like, you know, blowing up. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I mean, it's it's, cool that to... makes me feel good. Like yeah. You know, yeah. somewhere I got it right. Yeah, yeah, you should. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of like part of the portfolio really is like yeah. where that's kind of how you can probably win clients and stuff yeah. and bring people into the team and keep yeah. creating that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to regenerate, right? Yeah. I mean, for a lot of reasons. But, um, Damn. yeah. Where did you get the name wow. Arm League from? Okay, so I was I was working in music videos uh, early in L.A., and I always work in these big companies. I don't know if you know David Fincher and some of these, like, massive directors had these companies, Propaganda Films and um, Anonymous, is, which is still around. You know, I always thought those were crazy names to see on, like, you know, big, big work, mm-hmm. you know, Propaganda or whatever. So I liked having fun with the name mm-hmm. liked a little bit of Americana yeah I liked there's a competitive aspect I liked flipping it over on its head in a little bit and especially when we beat really good like we have to basically you know compete for a lot of our work yeah, so against I other love agencies. it when we like take out like the big dogs yeah. and then they're like and won the job yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like, I liked it for that yeah well it's a cool name and it honestly resonates kind of what we like, when you guys like six or seven years ago, you guys were making some cool hats. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't know if you remember that. It was the green one that you were talking green about. Green one. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. we still make them. Yeah. I can't get it right, to be honest with you, though. Really? It's been hard. Yeah. I remember when you were putting those out. I was like, shit, those are guys. Those guys are competitors. They're gonna make better yeah. stuff than us. <laughs> you know? And you weren't even caring about it, probably. <laughs> no, for me it was fun. I mean, I we like to make t-shirts and hats and yeah. you know, and things and just to make it like like you guys part of like a a collective and you want to put things forward that kind of represent even if it's just a, a hat or whatever but mm-hmm. um uh we need some help with our hat let's yeah. do it yeah. <laughs> we can help you green hat yeah. man that would be yeah. such like yeah. a turnaround from like the yeah. seven years ago in yeah. the song it'd be, on- be an honor <laughs> be fun man yeah it would be for us too so sick damn yeah down 
What a full circle deal. Bringing Eli here, this whole room. What a yeah, trip. Yeah, I love it. What a trip. Did you just break the third wall. And I just broke the third wall. <laughs> what a- and you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's wild though. But uh, but yeah, thanks again for coming down. We're stoked, and it's 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 just crazy hearing the stories behind a lot of these videos because a lot of the inspiration that we get, and obviously Eli, since you worked there, interned there, uh, you know, we we draw from from creatives like yourself, especially Farm League, you know, and and uh, and Scott Ballou, you know, who obviously was part of Farm League. But, uh, but yeah, it's just cool to kind of hear the behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. We're How just... do you guys approach stories? Like, what what is there certain things that you guys are like? I mean, because this is the hard thing. It's like, how do you represent something in an image, especially in a photograph or whatever, if you got to create it, right? And you got to, you know, I think about that a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. How do you how do you represent something in an image, or if it's a short piece, you know, and um, how do you craft it when you know it's got to do some lifting too for you? You know. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of our brand image, like I was saying earlier, c- came from just us going out there and having fun. Really, yeah. like whether we we're gonna go to Montana and what we we're gonna do there, were we all gonna get an RV and jump in a lake late at night when it's freezing and then go drink beers and just have someone filming? And that was a lot of like the natural start of film for us was just kind of what we were out there doing. Yeah. And then getting people like Eli in here really helps, like, to better come up with stories and tell. I actually, them. know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just like documenting what we're doing, what's happening, we could we could still do that, but also concept and like create ideas and stories, which is yeah. cool. So Definitely. it's like a, it's a combo it. of both. Love it. Yeah. yeah. And when we first got going, I mean, we had a I I would say so like a fairly ambitious message we wanted to push about connecting these two seemingly polarized communities and. So we wanted to kind of be a brand to encompass all of that, right? And we had all these grandiose ideas, but, you know, we were bootstrapped, so we had two T-shirts or something like that. So we're thinking, how can we how can we tell this message through photos and video with a tiny budget with two T-shirts that say the same thing in two different colors? You know, like, how can we do that? And so I feel like it always forced us to get, get on the drawing board, you know, as inexperienced as we were, you know. What? Nothing. <laughs> You're just over here smiling, I, I bro. Don't it's know hard why. to think, bro. I'm sorry. I just, it's hard to think. What, how, what is y'all's boy. process, though? Like, together, do you, how do you, how do you decide, like, you know, I mean, what are the... Oh, man. I mean, it's ever changing. Or? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe just brand things, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, when when you're like, I think this is a good idea, how does, how do you guys collaborate on that? Is it's, it just, uh, it's, well, it starts off, it has always been us three that kind of make the, the decisions on everything, and we've just done this, like, two-thirds thing, where if two out of three of us yeah want it then it's good to go yeah it's impossible to get a, a hail mary with all three <laughs> yeah no i mean it sometimes happens. it happens yeah, yeah. like yeah. we're all like oh that's sick let's go like it happens for sure but there's definitely we, we, but we're like yeah. brothers more than like most people people are brothers because we just spend every single day together like yeah, yeah. and weekends ten, yeah like, and trips it's, it's constant <laughs> and it's, well that's we, the process that we yeah. were talking about earlier right yeah. i mean and that's yeah, so it's good that you guys have identified that yeah, yeah. you've named it because that's yeah. part of it yeah you gotta identify the process name it call it something right this is how, you know and then yeah that's how we do it work through it yeah yeah well we had to have a process too because we're not really like we're not like research based like let's right. create that because of this reason it's like what do we truly think is cool and it, we're not following trends per se we're kind of just coming up with something so one of us could have a random idea that the two other people have to shoot down you know yeah or vice versa it could be a great idea and yeah. everyone's all on board for sure and like you know we have different personalities obviously and we've definitely fought a bunch but at the end it, i think the strong thing that we've had going is the fact that we can do what we've done for so long and not like kill each other is pretty strong testament. <laughs> God, because, you're gonna... well, there's a lot of people that can't do that. There's, you know, there's a lot of oh like, yeah, anything like, creative, really. Yeah, you know, it's, it's gnarly. People you're really sensitive. putting yourself out there. People get sensitive about it. Yeah, you know? but then on the other side of things, like Eli is a huge part of our creative. Like he does a lot of idea conception and and stuff like that. So he, I, he'll come up with something and then you know pr- pitch it to us basically, and then we usually say. That's sick. It's or, always way or better. Or we say, or we say we thought of it this way, and then and then Eli starts to fight with us. And then, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's usually a good system. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. How, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the two thirds thing really helped us. Two-thirds. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, just trying to because we're kind of learning, and again, Eli's brought in a lot of the 
um, experience side of it, right? And the protocol that we just kind of were winging for a long time. And, and uh, as we try and get ahead, you know, as a company, whether that's in product or creative and stuff, we're trying to get more intentional and trying to be more focused, whether it's a product related ad or the story pieces. I know Eli has been a big um, proponent of trying to get into that. And for us, you know, as a bootstrap company, that's the hardest thing to have budget for, you know, is like the passion pieces because it's like and, we only have so brands, much time. Brands nowadays too. I mean, the, the sad thing is, well, for us is, you know, they, they need to spend so much money on media, even at, or, or yeah, that's yeah. where the bulk of it is. But I still feel like if you can craft something that that stands for something and, yeah, yeah. and powerful and kind of, and it's, you know, unique enough, I mean, people still share shit, you know? Totally. And, you know, not just through the share button, but it, it permeates that way. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as, as you build brands and as you build story or you tell stories, that's kind of one of the, the keys, you know? And for if you sure. And stay, stay committed to that, it it pays off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the less product and ads, the better. Yeah. Is my opinion, so. Clients that get that, really, yeah. it's hard, though. It's hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. you I'm know, sure. You are like, I'm sure. Like, um... We were just doing this thing with a country star, you know, and it was like they were paying them a bunch of money. And uh, Chris Stapleton? No. <laughs> You're at a wild guess. Oh, yeah. He wasn't a Ram commercial, <laughs> wasn't he? So that was, no, but I mean, like, you know, the person's only in it for like three seconds at the end. And I'm, I was kind of thinking, and it's cool. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool ad, but I'm like, God, if I'm the client and I'm paying for that, how do you not? Yeah. Put him know, in more. Put him in more. Yeah. yeah. For sure. But it kind of, and the, there was reasons for it. Same with athletes, you know, like whether they can do lines or talk or, or kind of like they, they can be in on the, the thing or if they have to stand there, you know, most of the time it's like they just put them there. <laughs> you know, we just worked with Giannis and was like, he was great. You know, he's so easygoing and like yeah. not afraid to just be stupid or be himself. And mm -hmm. so you could do things with him. But um, yeah, so you have to weigh that shit out, you know. For sure. What other, what other like, athletes or celebrities have you guys worked with everyone man i mean i i mean uh i was thinking you know so i've done a lot of nike work you know even predating farm league so i got to work with kobe and damn and lebron crazy. and um we've worked with yeah i mean all those guys the federer and nadal and um what was the nba push because i know you guys did like did a, a lot bunch of stuff NBA, with NBA. you know between yeah. um what i was really hoping to do was more films films with them you know um, we did a we did a bunch of stuff with the NBA and WNBA as well. Yeah. Um, Are you a big, a big tennis guy? I would love you know I love tennis. Yeah. I love it, but I and I was I couldn't play today actually. I, I never I want to play with you. Yeah, yeah he's I'm a big tennis guy. I never can play. Well, I saw I, I looked at your uh, intro or whatever you want to call it on your website. Yeah. It says like who you are, yeah. and it says he can change your tennis game by just like looking at you <laughs> <laughs> i'm like change my tennis yeah, game let's yeah. go let's go yeah. let's go well that's that's one of the things man about like whether it's rick rubin or some of these you know people like amazing like masters right yeah. you know they they can give you one thing one thing and, and that fixes all of it versus mm -hmm. like you know if you're a pitching coach just you got to keep your elbow higher you got to like mm -hmm. release here your release point here your feet like giving too much mm -hmm. so you have to step back and figure out what's the one or two things that I can do that's going to fix or address it all. Sure. So we can talk tennis later. Okay. <laughs> yours, is, yours is just a look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. I wonder how much of it, like you're saying, the masters can really just boil it down to a message or a singular message. I wonder how much of that is just on the receiving end of that, kind of idolizing someone maybe or respecting them so much that it goes further, you know? Like, there's so much respect that they could say anything. You're like, yes. You know what I mean? It's yeah. true. The buy-in. Yeah, yeah, the buy-in. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, if you get that buy-in, all of a sudden, you know, you yeah. got your preaching to the choir, as they say, right? So, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I mean, I love that about just trying to figure out, you know, a path forward, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Hell yeah. Who knows? <laughs> books. I know, right? Books. Easy. Yeah. It goes by quick. podcast, boys. Oh, oh, really? What? Yeah. Hell yeah. Way. I always, I'm, I'm kind of, I like to stay in the shadows more. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Behind the camera? I've had a couple opportunities. I've been like, eh, I'm good. I'm good. But yeah. Well, what made you say yeah. yes to this then? You know, I just did another article and I was like, it was kind of fun. And like, I think what we all learned in COVID is just like, 
fuck it a little bit. Yeah. And, and like, so I thought it'd be fun to meet you and come fuck down yeah. and say, hey, like, yeah. dig your yeah. stuff. Very Thank you. Yeah, we're stoked to meet you. Yeah. It's not easy just to say yes to like a random podcast. I know. <laughs> you have to put yourself out there a lot. Yeah. And like, yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? Huh? Yeah, right? Yeah. You got to drive all the way down here. And that's oh, you know, cool. It yeah. worked out perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good Pre- one. Appreciate you having us. Cheers. A, we are stoked to have you on. So cheers. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah, you. Time. Thanks for coming. TL. <laughs> there we go.